Hello, Patrick Stack here. It's a long weekend, so that means Sport Daily is not back until Tuesday. But we would not leave you empty-handed the whole long weekend. We've got a bonus treat for our followers. It's the most comprehensive origin analysis going, and it's courtesy of our sister pod, ABC NRL Daily. If, like me, your mind is still kind of spinning from the men's game one and the Suali'i hit and the Brave Blues and the clinical Maroons, and what comes next? Have a listen to our hosts, Darcy McDonald and Josh Mansour, pull apart all the storylines. And if you're an AFL fan, don't get angry that we're focusing on rugby league. Just search for the AFL version with Paul Roos and Catherine Murphy. It's called ABC AFL Daily, one for each set of fans. As for rugby league fans, enjoy this treat. This is an ABC podcast. Hello and welcome to the ABC NRL Daily Podcast. My name is Darcy McDonald and here with me to unpack all of the action from last night's State of Origin series opener is former blues winger Josh Mansour. Josh, welcome. How are you feeling? Do you want to paint the picture, Darcy, or shall I? Let me just paint the picture for our listeners. Josh came in today. I was sitting down on the ground floor uh, waiting for him to arrive. He came in, wouldn't look me in the eye, walked almost straight past me and was shaking his head. (laughs) Can you blame me, Bart? No, I can't. (laughs) Honestly, look outside the window as well. Like this weather is a fair representation of my emotions right now. So, yeah, dark, gloomy. Uh, It's a bit of a sad day for uh, New South Wales, unfortunately. But, you know, we move on. Uh, The job's not done. They've won the the won the battle, but the war's still going. Absolutely. So Queensland defeated New South Wales 38-10 uh, on New South Wales home turf in Sydney yep. in the first game of the State of Origin series. My goodness, so much action to pack, but uh, unpack. But I guess we should start with the biggest talking point of the game. Joseph Suwali'i mm. sent off for a tackle on Reese Walsh. Okay, it's a very dangerous action. There's direct contact into the head with the shoulder. They're off. Oh. He's got to go. Joseph Swali'i has been sent from the field. A sensation after 7 minutes and 25 seconds. He went off for a HIA. This was a little bit fiddly, but basically the bunker had deemed that he was displaying Category 1 concussion symptoms, yes. pulled him from the field. He actually passed his cognitive test in the sheds, yep. uh, so essentially passed his HIA, but because of those Category 1 symptoms, he did not return to the field of play. Mm. Ashley Klein called in Joseph Suwali'i, sent him from the field, and the Blues were forced to play the rest of the game one man down. Mm. You were at the game. Yep. What was your initial reaction, and what was the reaction of the people around you? It sucked the air out of the whole stadium. Mm. Uh, even, like, I was with a few, a few former Blues players, Willie Mason, Josh Morris, and we were just stunned. Uh, everyone, I don't think anyone predicted that to happen, and I don't remember the last time a player's actually been sent off from the field, let alone in the first 10 minutes of an origin game. So... Yeah, it was a uh, survival mode after that for the Blues. Um, you know, like they were brave. They made some great efforts, um, you know, in parts of the game. But Queensland were just too good. They, you know, they obviously identified they were short on that right edge for New South Wales. And you could see Michael Maguire trying to compensate that by shifting Stephen Crichton in slightly his place. And, you know, unfortunately, we just couldn't stop the rot. Uh, Queensland kept on piling on the points and they, they were outstanding. And the, the funny thing is, and I have to echo Billy Slater's words, mm. is that they were far from their best. Yeah, um, they, scary. Yeah, they're looking like a very good side. Um, they were very calm, very composed. Mm. And I feel like with New South Wales, we always go into an origin series and we always play with too much emotion. And I like to use an analogy of a boxer, right? You mm-hmm. go into a fight with so much aggression and anger in you, and it's going to cloud your judgment. And unfortunately, in this case, we see what happened with Joseph Swali. And I'm not going to pile on that because it's the easy way out. It's easy to just point the finger at Joseph. And I'm sure he knows he doesn't need everyone else piling on and, you know, putting abusive comments in on social media and, you know, trying to blame him for everything. But unfortunately, it was a big moment. And, um, yeah, we just got to move on. It was actually, I believe, the fastest send-off in Origin there history. You so, there you go. There you go. Uh, poor old Joseph Sully. He was on Origin debut as well. So he has been hit with a grade two reckless uh, contact charge, mm. which carries a four-game suspension yep. um, with an early guilty plea. If he goes to the judiciary and attempts to fight it and fails, that mm. turns into five games. Basically, well, he is confirmed out of uh, game two. 
And I believe because the Roosters have a couple of buyers, uh, he won't, he'll be free to play game three, but he won't actually have any footy under his belt. Yep. I think his position's under threat come game three. No doubt. Has yep. to be. Has yeah. to be. And uh, it's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Like with Origin, you get slim opportunities, you know, to put on that so uh, sky blue jumper. And whenever you do, you've got to play your best footy. That's just, that's the way it is. And unfortunately for... For Joseph, he didn't capitalize on that opportunity. And uh, it's so harsh to say. I know it's harsh. He didn't go out there to take Reese Walsh's head off intentionally. But the way he defends, he likes to come out of the line 100 miles an hour and put a shot on that fullback and mm. make a statement. If he can pull off, you know, and get a massive reaction for, for his teammates, like we saw with Liam Martin when he rushed out yes. of the line and jammed Hopgood. Yeah. But unfortunately, when you get it wrong, you get it really, really wrong and it goes really south really quick. So for Joseph's case, I'm just worried for him because this is a career killing moment in my eyes. Um, he's going off to rugby union and he'll always have this in the back of his mind uh, mm. as a player. Uh, he, if there's an opportunity for him to come back to the NRL, he'll still have that at the back of his mind. The fans will have it at the back of his mind. That will be the moment. Like everyone will remember Joseph so lately for what he did in the origin, mm. unfortunately for, for him, but hopefully time heals everything. And um, yeah, once he has his stint with rugby union, we'll get, we'll get him back to our great game. I'll put you on the spot. Was it a send off or Simbin? I believe it was a send off. Mm. Oh, I do. Um, I don't feel like he had any attempt to really. The thing is, Reese Walsh, small body, Joseph, very tall. Um, and I know Reese really like slipped in last second yeah. into the into the tackle, mm. but I still don't think um, it would have made much of a difference because end of the day, Joseph didn't lower his center of gra gravity enough to really make any contact with his body. It was straight to the head. Um, and you see Reese Walsh motionless on the ground as a referee, Ashley Klein, you're forced to send him off. Yeah. There is, you can't blame the ref for ruining no. the game. Like it was not, <clears throat> it was out of his hands at that point. You know, the, the play was stopped. Uh, Ashley Klein, put, your, put yourself in his shoes. He would have looked back a motionless Reese Walsh, who's our star of the game, one of the biggest poster boys. And uh, he would have seen it on the big screen where he was just positioned and replaying over and over again. Ashley Klein had no choice but to send him off. So yeah, unfortunately, it ruined the spectacle. It ruined the game and potentially could ruin the series. But you know what? Never say never. New South Wales still have a chance and uh, mm. they have a big opportunity to, to knock off Queensland and Melbourne. Uh, has implications on the Broncos too. So Reese Walsh will come under the uh, mandatory 11-day stand-down period, which actually I believe he'll miss two games. There you go. So, uh, and he will just come back in for Origin 2. That'll be his first game yeah, back. Yeah. So, so you know, Queensland you go. got the luxury of having the hammer there as well. Mm. Like what a luxury to have. And obviously scoring a hat-trick. He just he always just sets the field alight whenever he puts that maroon jersey on, and not only him but Daily Cherry Evans, just the leadership he shows, yep. the composure. And I go back to the emotion. It was just talking cheese. Like New South Wales always play with too much emotion, um, a lot of aggression, but it's not controlled in a lot of parts of that game. And you look at the Queenslanders; they could have had every opportunity to be up in arms and just go straight away, straight over to Joseph and just put one on his chin. Yeah. But they were calm. They'll they were composed. They came together. The first thing they did, they went and consoled uh, Reese, and it was game on. It was game mode. Like they just stuck to their plays, they stuck to their jobs, and they were task focused instead of mm. self focused. They put their egos and emotions aside, and that's why Queensland won that game, in my opinion. I really want to. I want to talk Queensland and, and focus on them, but first, uh, I just need to gloat for a second. Uh, <laughs> yes, in, you do. <laughs> in yesterday's episode, uh, we had our predictions. I actually think an outside back or a back specifically, Reese Walsh, will get injured for Queensland and Selwyn Cobbo will come on and it'll end up being a really smart decision by Billy Slater. I'm just going to pat myself on the back. I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Yeah, what a masterstroke. Yeah, it was yeah. a big, yeah, Oracle, the Oracle herself. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's talk Queensland. Uh, my goodness. I had the tough task last night while I was over at Fox Sports mm. doing player ratings. Now, my goodness, oh, they, they, hate to your they keep me up at night because I can be a bit of a people pleaser. Uh, so I find them really hard. But uh, I gave Daly Cherry Evans a 10 out of 10. 15 short of halfway. Eastern side, Grant Cherry Evans. He kicks from inside the 40. He's looking for a 40-20. He has the angle. And, oh, he's pulled the rabbit out of the hat. DCE with a 40-20. 
20. That man is aging like a fine wine. He is 35 years old. Uh, two tri assists, a 40 20, an intercept. Uh, he had 20 plus tackles. I think there was one tackle where he put his body on the line um, and took on Payne Haas. Like that guy, it just does not age. How fantastic was he? It's something about these Queenslands. You see with Cameron Smith and uh, he's played till he was uh, in his dinosaur years and it looks like Daly Cherry Evans has taken a leaf out of his book. And, you know, Daly is a player that you'd love to play with. I played with him for a, with an Australian team and uh, he's such a great guy. He's um, he's obviously one of the best halfbacks in our game for the past decade anyway. So, you know, he's had a, uh, a fair bit of stick in the previous uh, State of Origin series, but to see the last couple, he's really stood up and... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, he came out and said that he just pretended that he was playing in the Manly jersey. And um, huh. there are some similarities with that, obviously, with the colours and whatnot. But, yeah, I feel like he's a completely different beast every time he steps in the Origin Arena. And he plays all, he, he backs himself like mm. that first try, just went to dummy half, attacked that short side, hovered through the middle, took on a few defenders and a great offload to, um, to Ben Hunt in the middle. And those two just... Yeah, every time they put that Origin jersey on, it just, yeah, for New South Wales, it's it's never good. Ben Hunt, like two tries, um, a try-saving tackle on Stephen Crichton. He was like, he looks so good every yeah. time he plays hooker. He's another one. Like he just he, ages well. Wait, is he 34 or something Can, like that? Yeah, yeah, 34. I think 35 this year, I should say. Wow. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So um, I, I faced Ben Hunt in, my, uh, in his last year in 20s. So, yeah, he'd be a year older than me. So anyway, yeah, he... Playing hooker, out of position as well. Um, you know, he's just like a little staffy. He just doesn't stop. He just built to the ground and makes his tackles and he's everywhere. And he's almost on every play, which is, yeah, hard to stop. And the hammer. So, you know, he's obviously does, would have spent a bit of time training at fullback oh, to, yeah. to in case there were any injuries or anything to mm, happen. Mm. But, you know, you go into that game assuming you're going to spend the entire 80 minutes at centre and then this dramatic incident happens in the first 10 minutes. He shifts to fullback and, you know, three tries um, and a try-saving tackle on Spencer Lenu. He mm. held up Spencer Lenu, mm. of all people. Mm. He was outstanding. He was close to score of four tries. Yeah, if he was you, so if you, good. If, if you recall with Tedesco, like last series, he was on ice and he slipped over and Hammer went and scored under the mm -hmm. sticks. And this time around, try-saving tackle. Um, yeah, I'm actually happy for Teddy. I know we're uh, flipping it. I know uh, I don't want to upset you Queenslanders, but <laughs> I, I want to talk about Teddy as well because – you know, there was a lot of scrutiny of him coming back into the fold. Um, obviously, upsetting that Dylan Edwards got injured, but the redemption story for Teddy, uh, I thought he was outstanding. I know the script didn't go according to plan, but he did his part. He scored a try, try saving tackle. There was a couple of moments where I'm sure he would have um, had back, but I'm sure every New South Wales player would say the same thing. So good, good on for Teddy, and I, I feel like in the next couple of games, I feel like he's earned his spot as well. We will touch on, um, we'll go into New South Wales mm. soon, but... Before we move on from Queensland, Selwyn Cobbo as well. Like Outstanding. Oh, you know what's the annoying thing about this is I was really interested to see what Billy Slater's plan was for Selwyn Cobbo. I, mean, I was just so keen to see how he used him in the game. And we didn't get to see that because, you know, obviously when the injury happened, he, he obviously was going to come on in the centres, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I would have loved to have seen if there were no injuries, how he would have come on. We'll have to wait until game two for that. But yes, same thing. Selwyn Cobbo probably didn't really know what role he was going to play coming into this game. It was probably going to be a wait and see situation. Comes on at centre, you know, finishes with a try assist, two line breaks, nine tackle busts, well over 140 metres. He was a beast. A machine. But yeah. it, you know what? With that, they all played great. But New South Wales, we have to uh, identify, like, they played with 12 men for 70 minutes. And they were in the fight the first half. I think it was 20 to 12. But again, they just, I think fatigue towards the end really just set in. And Queensland just took their opportunities. Um, they played smart football uh, as well. When a player gets sent off in the opposition team, you can kind of go into your shell a bit more. Like if they are defending pretty well, you can get frustrated more and they can see through the team. It can be a toxic trait. But uh, again, Queensland were just outstanding. Uh, it went all according to plan and amazing foresight from B Billy Slater. Again, mm. I'm not surprised there. Like he had people in his corner as well questioning his yeah. decision about Silver Cobb. We both were questioning yeah. about that decision and it looks like it, it has paid off. Tenfold. He is just that guy. Things just happen for him. Know. He's you know, he's that guy. You know, people say it's luck, but it's not luck. Yeah, you know, true. He, you make your own luck. Exactly right. Perfect example. It, it's been his whole career um, in his playing days, and uh, it looks like it's now transferred to his coaching. His uh, coaching attention role. to detail is 
outstanding. Yeah. Like he thinks through every single thing. And yes. you even during the game when Hammer went to fullback, um, instead of just sitting in his coach's box and delivering a message, he went down to the sideline himself wow. to deliver the message wow. because he thought, you know what, I've got something here that in my mind that could help Hammer yeah. on the run. I'm going to just head down now and quickly tell him and then go back to the coach. Can, can box. I start a reception as a, from a player to see your coach come down from the coach's yeah. box onto the field to deliver a message? It's cool. That is, for me, I would have so much respect for Billy yeah. for doing that. Like, it means a lot more. You just, the, the fact that he made that effort, like, you have to make that effort for him. Like, it just. You want to reciprocate that. So Billy yeah. Slater, too good. I take my hat off to him. Too good. Uh, New South Wales, once again, probably the biggest talking point, mm. um, you know, after this game of probably heading into game two. Look, let's start with the halves because you, you've already kind of alluded to that. Mm. Uh, Nico Hines, what did you make of his performance? Again, it's, I think it's hard to be critical on Nico. Uh, I feel so sorry for him because... Last series, you know, he was his name was dragged through the mud, um, and I don't think it was fair because he was playing out of position. Um, things didn't go according to plan as well, um, and I think it was a bit of you know he was found out in the centres. You know, there's no doubt about that. Coming to this series, this was meant to be his redemption story. Again, first seven minutes, boom, you're down twelve men, mm. and it wasn't it, it was unfair because it wasn't only his fault because. Everyone was on tilt. Everyone went into survival mode. Everyone was worried about making a mistake and everyone was playing for themselves at that point. There's, there's, it's just, it's just natural. Mm -hmm. It's just natural. And poor Nick, he couldn't, he didn't have an opportunity to shine. He did his best. He did what he could. And unfortunately I'm worried about his yep. selection for game two and three. Um, you know, you got Mitch Moses now back into the fold and, mm -hmm. you know, he played outstanding every time he's put on that sky blues jumper on and. Uh, Nico and Mitch, I feel like there's a bit of a difference in my eyes between those two players. Um, it'll be quite interesting. Again, Michael Maguire is going to be put in a position uh, where he's yeah. going to be like, what do I do here? Yeah. What you know what's interesting as well is uh, Mitchell Moses has a big game against the Bulldogs on Monday on the public holiday. And he'll know that. 100%. Nico Hines, uh, not playing. Not playing this weekend. Not even named in the extended squad. It was obviously a decision by Craig Fitzgibbon and, and maybe Nico to give him the weekend off. And I reckon if Nico had his time back, he'd say, I want to play this weekend. I because I the best way to get over a not so good game is to respond straight away. Without a doubt. And you can highlight all the physical kind of aspects of, you know, the aftermath of origin, but it's the mental side yeah. that's really going to take its toll. And the fact that he's sitting on the sidelines, he it can easily go into a rut, yep. go down the rabbit hole and really uh, get controlled by all these negative thoughts. But yeah, I would have liked to see Nico back up this week, but again, you want to play the safe approach and there are concerns about his calf. Yep. We know that. So... What do you do? What do you do? So you're on board with keeping James Tedesco. I am. And you're not bringing back Dylan or bringing in Dylan Edwards? No. Okay. No, no. I, I think uh, Teddy's performance is warranted to, to be back in that arena for game two. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Michael Maguire, you – it's like, again, you're rolling the dice. You don't know what you're going to get from Dylan Edwards in game two. And I, I'm, I'm a very good mate. I'm a, yeah. a very close teammate of, uh, or former teammate of Dylan Edwards. And I'm saying like, it's not fair on Dylan. It's not fair. Like the pressure in that game, it's a must win. It's yeah. a do or die for New South Wales. Yeah. Teddy's been in that position before. I thought he played pretty well, like I said. And, you know, people might agree with me or disagree with me, but I feel like it's the right decision to stick with Teddy. And he knows... He knows what it's like to be in that high pressure yeah. environment. So That's a good point. It's, it's going it, to, like a... Dylan's going to go out there and like he's coming off injury. So he's already um, underdone there. He's going to go into a game where he's got no choice but to shine. If yep. he doesn't, he'll never play Origin again. Yeah. That's the reality. So in, my, in this case, if New South Wales lose game two, okay, maybe give him this opportunity for game three. You mm. know what I mean? But again, I feel like Teddy has to stay. Yeah, it's a really good point because the stakes are higher. It's a much, it's do much or higher. die. Um, He'll handle the pressure. Yeah, like I said, he's playing in those big games for sure. I just don't think it's fair. Yeah, uh, it, it could go either way. Uh, I've got to say, like the scoreline thirty eight ten, it looks ugly, right? Um, and it did get ugly in the last say ten fifteen minutes. Mm. But I thought New South Wales were quite brave. They were. Yeah. They were. Like, there were big moments. Liam Martin, outstanding. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, He Jane really took Hopgood. He took on the um, – I'm actually interested to see in game two what Queensland's pack, how they play, because I feel like 
New South Wales, um, they made their intentions clear that they wanted to try and bully the pack. And they were going to play through the middle. Yeah, and Liam, no Liam Martin took on that kind of enforcer mm. role. Um, and I, I'm interested to see in game two of Queensland then come out firing and want to try and replicate that mm. because I, New South Wales have showed their hand in that way. Yeah, well, I, there'll be a few changes. Yeah. There, there are going to be a few changes. Like, I want to ask you, yeah. fans' perspective, do you keep Nico Hines knowing that you've got Mitch Moses available? <sighs> nah. <laughs> you don't? No, I'm not keeping I'm, – I'm putting in Mitchell Moses yeah. because Why? I just – Origin is – uh, how do I word this? Nico Hines, fantastic player, wonderful human, and very skillful player. But something about Mitchell Moses screams origin. He's a competitor. Yep. And I think he has... Mongrel. Mongrel. And I think he has the right amount of ego, if that makes sense. I'm not saying he's yeah. full of himself. Um, I'm just saying like he owns... He owns the space. He has a fantastic kick. Yeah, he's got a fantastic kicking game and he knows what he has to offer. I agree. And um, he played last year and I thought he was, yeah, one of New South Wales' best. I trust him in that arena. That's the thing, right? So you look at Nico, yeah, he hasn't had a fair kind of game in the sense things have worked out for him, right? But he hasn't owned the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, you could say, oh, you know, it didn't work out for him, but sorry, life's not fair. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. And every time Mitch has put on that jersey, he's owned the moment. Mm. And I've played with Mitch. And Mitch is one of the best halfbacks I've played with in my yeah, career. Yeah, 100%. Mitch, on the other hand, he has played halfback his whole career. Yeah. Nico hasn't. That's he's true. come from fullback. He's, was a, sorry, he was a utility. Yeah. Then he went to a, as a fullback. And now he's a half. So I trust Mitch. I, I really do. I know he's coming back from injury, but these next few games, the way he takes Parramatta, where, the, where they are now... If they get on a, a, a string of runs together, get a string of runs together, I think Mitch is back into the fold. I really do. I do too. A couple of highlights for New South Wales. We touched on Liam Martin and, you know, the spirit that he showed. Yep. Spencer Lenu. I mm. thought what he brought off the bench. Almost scored too. My goodness. He was outstanding. Every time he took a carry, it was in, with intent. Yes. Intent to hurt yeah. the opposition. Yeah. To play the ball fast, to lay that platform. And that's what you need from your interchange bench. And we said that. Yeah. That is his sole responsibility. And the only concern I had for Spencer is I've seen it out in Penrith, especially when we're doing shark bait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he'll go full 110% for the first two. But then you like the Incredible Hulk, he just slowly declines that's and cool. gets fatigued sure. and gets tired, right? Yeah. But he owned that moment. Yeah. He, he owned the role. He knew what he was, uh, what he was there to do. And... Um, I thought it was a massive asset for New South Wales. Me too. And, uh, he, for me, his his origin material. Yeah. Mungo aggressive. Um, he was controlled. He controlled his aggression. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he he was great. He was I can, awesome. I compared him to say like Queensland's equivalent in Mo Fodder Waker. Yeah. And Spencer completely out outdid him. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And um, he missed a few games this year. Mm. On, on, um, you at know, the start of the year. At the yeah. start of the year, and it doesn't look like it's affected him one bit. Like yeah. he he was made for that for that game and. It's a shame that we couldn't, um, yeah, he, he couldn't get that try as well, which, uh, he, yeah. Uh, he, for. He's a definite for game two. Oh, without though. a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Who do you reckon's under the microscope? Oh, okay. So. Queensland, let's be real. Queensland's going to stick with the same. I would say eight. so. I don't, I can't see Billy Slater making any changes. Yeah. David um, for feeder? Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. If anything, he might shake up his bench because I, you look at New South Wales and, and having Spencer and having that mongrel coming off the bench, he might change up his bench a little yeah. bit. I just, I don't know who, who he It'll leaves probably be out. Hopgood, I think. Yeah, I, I think maybe. Potentially, but. And brings in someone with a bit more. X factor. Yeah. You know, it can break a few tackles, um, create something out of nothing. And that's yeah. what origin is, right? We yeah. saw what, the first try, that perfect example, yeah. Daily Cherry Evans out of dummy half. That's yeah. unscripted. You can't preview that. Yeah. So, you know, David can bring that. Yeah. But New South Wales, I think there's a few. I still think James Tedesco, um, I think Madge will sit on that and okay. he'll have a really good think about it. Um, the, Nico- wingers, the wingers are a lock. Yeah. I I, oh, Zach Lomax. Outstanding. Outstanding. Remember how we, I was worried about yeah. he was going to be too emotional. The, was he the... going to come up with rocks and diamonds? He was outstanding. He was outstanding. Outstanding. Also, Zach, you are a winger. Please don't go to centers, please for me. But can we just? <laughs> you are a winger, Zach. Oh my God, Zach! Um, oh. Yeah, he... from a winger to, to a winger now. 
stay there. Like you're <laughs> killing it. He was so good that try he scored, and but that was a kick from Nico Hines. But yeah. I do think Nico Hines is probably the most um, under the microscope. You can't leave anything up for chance for this next game. You mm. just can't. You, you got to go with the best and healthiest um, and most informed seventeen. In and my opinion, Reese Robson was good. I think he yeah he keeps that number nine jersey. Definitely for me, he's a lock. Jakey has to stay. Yeah, um, Payne Haas has to stay. Angus Crichton, Liam Martin. Like, I, I feel like they need to stay as well, along with Kevin McInnes. But, yeah, maybe there might be a shake-up on the bench and potentially in the spine. Jerome, I, I thought Jerome Luai was good. I thought good. he was good too. Yeah, yep. I thought he was good. He did what he could. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a very – oh, I hate to be Michael McGuire. Right I now. know. Guy, but you know what? Guy. It's going to give us things to talk about. Everyone in the rugby league world, we're going to be talking about it for the next couple of weeks. Yep. And all eyes will be on Mitchell Moses on Monday to yep. see how he performs. And it's not going to be an easy game. Bulldogs are, what, top two defensive sides in the comp. They are, second best defensive team <laughs> in the go. comp. So yep. do they get Matt Burton back? They do get Matt Burton back. There you go. Um, yeah, so it'll be that'll be a really good game. Speaking of good games, Women's Origin yes. tonight up in Sold Newcastle. Out. Sold out. I'm Isn't that great? I know. So good. So they're expecting 30,000. So they actually broke the crowd record for game one up at, uh, up in Brisbane. 25,492 went to that game. They're expecting 30,000 tonight. Um, New South Wales, they won in game one. So they, all they need to do is win tonight and they've sealed the series. This yes. is the first three-game series in women's origin history. Mm. So it's very exciting. Um, just to go through some of the changes, I mean, New South Wales unexpected, uh, sorry, expected, I should say, <laughs> unchanged from game one. They produced no an upset. There. So, of no course, surprises. no surprises. Corbin Baxter, Rachel Pearson still in the halves and Jamie Chapman, she was a star in game one, scored a length of the field try. But for Queensland, a few changes. So yep. uh, Zahara Temera dropped at halfback. Ali Brigginshaw moves from lock to halfback, which I think I think will work. Makes Ali's sense. experience. Yes, I um, yeah, I think you need her there. In comes uh, Keely Joseph into the 17. She missed game one through to injury, and I love her. Like, she is an absolute workhorse. So if anyone... I'm surprised Ali was in lock in the first place. Yeah, to totally they do this. A, they've done it a fair few times. I, I can see where she's gone with it. Like, I know Ali's got great service, and she's yeah. probably, like, obviously with age, like, she's lost a bit of speed. Yeah. But, yeah, I think, like, her calming influence was more suited in the halves, yeah. to be totally honest with you. 100%. That. And I think they, like, Tani was just trying to get, you know... Zahara Temera yeah. into the yeah. side, but I, I that. yeah love Ali at halfback, and I think she needs to be there. Lauren Brown, she was originally named in the centres, but there was a late change and she moves to hooker, which makes sense because that's where she's played pretty much all of her representative. Yep. Um, Footy Emanita Packy comes onto the wing for her Origin debut, so that's very exciting. So yeah, players to watch: um, Taryn Aiken in the halves for Queensland. Yep, without a doubt, her running game is electric. Of course, Tamika Upton. I think if Queensland do win this and level the series, it's going to be on the back of Tamika Upton. Uh, but then you look at New South Wales backline: you know, Emma Tonegato, oh. Jamie Chapman, Jess Sergis, Isabel Kelly, Tiana Penatani, and then Caitlin Johnson up front. It is. Um, it makes it for, shakes, yeah, it's yeah. ground. Sh- like you can't like with that back line, they're like so obviously good. They're, they're the heart of that New South Wales yeah. team, right? Um, they've got the experience, they've got the power, speed, yeah, name, name, whatever you want, but yeah, yeah they're they're ready and equipped for and a that big ba- game. that back line is so set in stone, yeah. as well. Like Queensland, there's bits and pieces changing each year, but like you know, the center pairing of Isabel Kelly and Jess Sergis, they've been there since the beginning. Like, can, I, can I say something? Yeah, I just want to give a massive rap to these girls, yeah, because they've been. They haven't had the, the time no. as us men, you yep. know, to grow their skill, you know, the love for the game and like, even the fans like to come out and support them. Like I, I grew up in a family full of women, single mom, two sisters. I've got two daughters on my own and I'm all for it. Like yeah. go you girls. Like how yep. good. It's so good to see. And I'm really, really excited to watch this game and tune in myself. And I think as the years go on, it's just going to be getting bigger and bigger. You just see the growth. Yeah. Like how long? How many years? It's just we're still in the embryo stage, yes, really, for, for the NRLW. Yep. Um, there's going to be more teams coming into the fold as well, and I feel like the more p- uh, participation with the girls, you know, the more involvement, commitment. The commitment's there. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but as the years go on, I feel like it's just going to keep on growing. It's, I just I'm so excited for them. I'm yep. really really wrapped for them. It's going to boom, and you know, the thirty thousand fans up in Newey tonight are going to have an absolute ball. Yes. Um, 
Well, that's all we have time for. Really? There's so much to talk about, but Don't worry. We've (laughs) still got tomorrow's episode to unpack uh, the Women's Origin game and everything else that pops up in the Rugby League news cycle over the next 24 hours. I'm sure we'll be all over it anyway. 100%. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Darcy. Well, that's it from the ABC NRL Daily Podcast. I'm Darcy McDonald, and don't forget you can follow the Women's State of Origin live on the ABC Listen app. Josh and I will catch you again tomorrow. See ya. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.